Eric. So Isaac Newton, who did you know, came up with this math, great mathematical formulas to uh, present a theory of well, how we don't fly off into space and not come to Earth, the planets orbit the sun, etc. It's gravity. But this idea of this great mathematical formula that seems to work for the entire universe, that led to the idea that the creator and whoever created the universe were a clock maker. Clocks were the most precise technological uh, device at that time to make an accurate clock. And accurate clocks at that time were huge. It was a big deal when they made like a pocket sized watch. You can't find longitude without proper time. That would revolutionize everything. And so a deist idea would be like taking Newton's formula, the creator is like this clockmaker who organizes this beautiful mathematical formula of the universe. Set it all up, all ready to go, all the planets, the stars, gravity, us, everything. And then looked at the creation and said, begin. And then sat back and watched. Watch this creation. Now, I should add, Newton was not a deist, but it came from his ideas. And so this is a slight, this is a difference than what standard Christianity at the time. The creator is not interacting. The creator is allowing us to decide our own fate. Remember, humanism, there's a el big element of humanism there. But the Enlightenment had this idea, and a lot, almost all the Enlightenment thinkers were partial deists, some fully deists. They had this idea that we're all given these big brains to decide our own. That's the great creator's gift, and we must decide our own fate. We will decide. And so that's deism. And so when you take this idea that we can control our own fate. And so with that, this beautiful countryside that was cool. And there's an element of predestination, and there's all kinds. I mean, it's just a, how did I do that? I have no idea how I do that. You guys are giving me no help at all. I got rid of the whole thing. I got my World War II in the Pacific stuff on here. I blame. So we're not going to get to all the Enlightenment thinkers, but there are four we have to get. So everyone write down John Locke. You do not need to write down. I put these up here. I didn't know how much I want to talk about them. These are the various writings of John Locke, two treatises of the government's most famous, but just write John Locke. John Locke is not necessarily the Enlightenment per se, but his writings have great influence on Enlightenment thinkers and have huge influence on this place called the United States. So this is what we got to get. There's a statue of Locke, his philosophy. We are humans and possess free will. So he Deism was just being created. He has that very much of the idea of uh, the deist that we have free will. We decide our own fate, good or bad. And therefore, kings, there's no divine right. Or for that matter, those with great amounts of wealth, they are rich because they were born in a nobility. It's not divine. It is because of decisions we make. He had no problem with any qualities of wealth. He just didn't like this idea of, of um, that they um, that wealthy portrayed it as because of God, and therefore divine right was nonsense. Now he would also be thinking this, trying to get rid of King James II, the Glorious Revolution, but divine right, bunch of garbage. We decide. He had a little bit of. Had a little bit of Hobbes, we all start with kind of a blank slate, and then we all decide this. Let's get to the next part. Therefore, we all have natural rights that are endowed, he said by God, but a deist would say by the creator. And that's why I use that because that's in this little document called the Declaration of Independence. But we are endowed at not not at birth, at creation. The switch was flipped. We are endowed by these rights. And how, what we decide to do with them, it's up to us. We have that power the creator gave us. And what are these rights? Life, liberty, and property. Life is independence. Liberty, freedom to decide your own fate. Property, property cannot be taken away at the whim of 
whatever power that might be, that king, the government, you must have control of your own property. Or is this left on all people? Property. Does this remind you of anything? Yes. Didn't they change the time of the third word of the Declaration of Independence? So another a French philosopher changed it to life, liberty, but you know, it's view of happiness, which means essentially the same thing. It's a different way of saying it. Property has a just implication of just greed, and then Jefferson copied that. Government gets its power from the people. This is called a social contract. So if government gets its power. We decide our governments, and if we don't like our governments, that's our fault. We allow that to happen. Now you might say, wait a second, our government's a dictatorship and they have a gun to our head. Well, yes, but we allow them to have that gun. I know it's more complex than that. People who have been in dictatorships know you can say, I don't like it. Well, good for you, they got a gun. But we as a group allow this. But if government infringes on rights, they must be removed. They must be removed. And that is the glorious revolution. James out, William and Mary in, and that is this concept in that we have certain rights. And so when the American Revolution hit, we have these rights as Englishmen, they're infringing on them, we have no choice but to declare independence. And the Republic is the best form of government to do this, a government of representation. Now, law said it should be a republic but the head of state can be the king. He's no dummy, he's a king. But that's what he said, eventually the head of state in Britain would become the prime minister. And so Thomas Jefferson loved John Locke. He is the main author, but not the only one, of the Declaration of Independence. That is the handbill that was sent out through the 13 colonies to inform them, much to their surprise, that the that um, there's no longer, you're no longer 13 individual colonies, but this thing called the United States. And so the United States really is a child of the Enlightenment. And Jefferson, who wrote it, said we are endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights. He was very much influenced by deist thinking. But let's get to this then. Next thing. Oh, we're not going to do Thomas Paine. So let's get to the Enlightenment. So these new Enlightenment are going to come off of reading Locke and the Scientific Revolution. And they're going to be called philosophs. And these are going to be these, uh, this idea that we can change, we can progress. There, they, there can be reforms in society. Now, their idea of reforms might be significantly different than our idea of reforms. I mean, their reforms were get rid of divine right and get rid of the king controlling everything, get rid of the last vestiges of feudalism. We might see reform as something different now because for the most part, we don't have feudalism. And they're intensely optimistic. Of course, they can be afford, they can afford to be optimistic. What class were most of these people in? Actually, upper, upper, maybe middle, but they're wealth, relatively wealthy. It's easier to be optimistic when you have wealth. Doesn't mean you can't be optimistic when you don't. But when you have, when you know you have wealth, you can, you also know that I can find lots of stuff and make mistakes. If you don't have wealth, it's harder to make mistakes. And for those of you who live in the United States, you know the way. For example, if you want to go to any kind of education out of high school, it's so much more expensive now. Your mistakes are limited. I'm just, I'm just telling you the way it is. I had much more opportunity because college was a lot cheaper. So I had that opportunity there. I could do other things. I could make mistakes. Not that I ever did. No way. Yeah, I mean, I could hang out and do an extra year and get uh, three majors and three minors and just kind of hang out and go to graduate school. I liked college. But it's more difficult. I'm just, I'm just telling you the reality. Okay, so with that, let's get to Voltaire. Now, we don't have to write this down. Just write down Voltaire. That's his real name. Candide is probably his greatest piece of work. I like Candide. He had a good translation. It's hard to read if you don't have a good translation. But just write down Voltaire. Lots of statues of Voltaire. He's an interesting guy. Sometimes I like him as a philosopher. I'm not saying I agree with him. I think he was also kind of an arrogant jerk, but he was definitely a deist. 
he challenged organized religion and he challenged prayer. Not so much that he disagreed with somebody praying. He didn't like the organized prayer. You must pray. You must do these 20 things in the Catholic Church to become, to go to heaven. Remember, he's in France. And he didn't like the organized religion as he thought that was a way to control people. And so it's complex. As he saw it, your own spirituality of what you are should be your own decision. And so some people read that as saying he's against all church or religion. It's, it's much more complex. He's against that religion that was dictating to people to control them, to organize them, to say your king has the power of God behind him. And, and <laughs> he hated his definition of intolerance of ideas. He hated bigotry. But his idea of bigotry would be much different than our idea, or at least my idea of bigotry. And I'm sure a lot of you are similar. We, I know we differ on some things. But intolerance of different ideas, intolerance of different governments, uh, bigotry against different classes or different education, but not necessarily was he opposed to bigotry um, against different people of different color and skin, which racism had taken hold in that 100 years after colonialism rapidly. It didn't really exist before colonialism, before empire and slavery. By the 1700s, it was taken hold. Or for that matter, bigotry against women. And then anyway, that, that was not his. So that was it. It was, it was more against what men, especially relatively wealthy men. And what he talked about religion is he said, therefore, he saw this as bigotry against other religions. And therefore, we must crush the infamous beast. But like I said, it was much more complex. Much more complex than this. Anyhow, he believed, all right, people, you know, they want to be smart, they want to be, but most of them don't know enough. What we need is an enlightened despot, an enlightened dictator, an enlightened monarch. And there's going to be three things I've heard, monarchs I have to mention. William or Frederick the, um, the Great of Russia, Catherine the Great of Russia. And I'm going to very briefly mention uh, Paul of the Austrian Empire. All would be kind of enlightened despots, but they're still despots. Does anybody remember Greek philosophy? A little bit of that. Plato said the same thing with like a philosopher king. Plato said that. And he's very Hobbesian. He believed that, remember Hobbes said that um, people are rude, evil, brutish, we got to be controlled. He kind of had that feeling where even though people have rights, they're also brutes. If you go on the internet and look up one of the, on the Google machine, and you find, look up Google uh, Voltaire quotes, there are a million Voltaire quotes. Like this one, they'll say, and I've seen this many, 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 many different times. And so I put this little meme up that somebody made. You can agree or disagree with that quote. Of course, it's not Voltaire. Most Voltaire quotes you'll find out are not Voltaire. That's actually done by a fascist. But what about? Oh, we already jumped back. We're going right here. What about this one? I just heard someone say this yesterday in a great quote by Voltaire, so I had to put it up. No, Voltaire did not say this either. That is kind of Voltaire. So here are some Voltaire quotes. You don't have to write them down. Let's, I'll give you a couple of Voltaire quotes. Like that one. That's back to the we are responsible. And if you don't act, you're responsible for what happens. Very Diaz point of view. I, I kind of like that. But also that's a little bit of an anti, anti-organized religion. Once again, organized. That's a pretty clever one. What he's talking about is the absolute monarchy of France. You better, if the monarchy is wrong, you better say they're right. Uh, let's go, let's get to this one. I always thought that's too Socratic for me. So he did not believe that everyone has certain inalienable rights. I think that's a pretty good one. Prejudice is opinion without judgment. 
and judgment only comes from knowledge. And you'll be shocked how, how most people have very little knowledge. Doesn't mean they're dumb. And then lastly, you've probably all seen that one, guys. That is a Voltaire quote. And that's one I've had people say that. Well, Voltaire didn't say that. Say that. No, he actually did say that one. Okay, so that's Voltaire. Let's get to Diderot. We have to, don't write this down. But Diderot was thinking we need something that will allow us to debate, examine, look through. Yes. To look through. Don't worry about other opinions. Don't worry about your prejudice. We need someplace where we can find information. In fact, that was all, that was going to be the great promise of the Internet. As it turned out, that absolutely did not happen. If you don't believe me, just buy, spend one minute on the Internet. Yeah, and you will find mostly garbage. But he's the one who would create the first encyclopedia. Or they would get the, the entire cycle of knowledge all together. Got this? You know, all together. Change it, that even change thinking ever. You can look things up, go through. And I can't begin to tell you what a big deal the encyclopedia was when I was your age. You could not find stuff. It was almost impossible. So if you didn't know it, you had to find someplace to look it up. And the encyclopedia was this vast array of knowledge. The internet's have element of this, but it's also full with a lot of garbage, like fake Voltaire quotes. And so you have to write this down. I've seen the first. The first one would be 28 volumes, alphabetical order, a brand new thing, cross-referenced and indexed in the back, which is what Internet Search does. 1,500 liras was about five years' wages for the average people, so only the very elite can afford this. But I'm old enough to remember, or I would say just a young, to remember encyclopedia sales that's coming door to door and selling encyclopedias. People say, buy encyclopedia, your kid will fail school if they don't have this. And I still have one of the old encyclopedia sets, and they're pretty amazing. If you think about it for a short, it's underneath there, but frankly, most of the information you can find online, the problem is 90% of it, what's online is junk too. Here are some of the pages. It is everything from farm implements, the workings of the human body, the foot, the hand, Here's how to make, how to construct the sleeve. To make patterns and select and sew a sleeve. How to make a canal. How to forge iron. How to make a chair. It had everything in it. Oh yeah. And the human body. So we're gonna get right there. Next one, Montesquieu. Catherine the Great loved. Diderot. Actually invited him, invited her. All we need to know is Montesquieu. Don't worry about the, the, the works. Montesquieu. So Montesquieu's growing up, born Louis XIV, Louis XV. Absolute monarchy. And he, this is what we have to get. Governments. If governments are to function, there are three different types of government. Three different types within government. How, how people are governed. The first, monarchy. A republic, so monarchy, king, usually hereditary, a republic, government by representation, and lastly, despotism, a dictator. Three different forms of government. And the bad part about this is, what's the bad, oh, I'm sorry, the bad part of this, this is two of them, most of the power is in the hands of one person or one small group of people. And what he said was, there must be a separation of powers within the government to ensure freedom and liberty. Now, once again, his definition of freedom, his definition of liberty will be different than probably most of our definition. This should be familiar to anybody who has been sentient in the United States of America. This is my way of saying, these are things you should know. Because James Madison loved Montesquieu. And James Madison is the father of the United States Constitution. And that is why there is a separate judicial, 
executive or legislative and executive branch of the United States Constitution. Montesquieu. And so they have certain powers. Create laws, enforce and interpret laws. This is a lot bit more vague, but a separate court case to decide who and who is not following the law. Who's our executive? The United States right now. Joe Biden. Who are members of the legislature today? In the state of Montana, we have two members of the Senate and two members of the House. Now, I can tell from some of your eyes, you have no idea. And trust me, people like me will take advantage of you if I was cruel and mean. I'm not. I'm here to teach you. But if I'm really good, you can come down. Who are members of the House? The Senate. Some of us predict. Yeah, I heard a bunch of people say some players. There is Steve Daines. Steve Daines and is a senator. Who's our other senator? John Tester. Who's our member of the House? We have two districts. Who? Who's Gian Forte? He is the governor. Whispered the wrong information. Yeah. Here's another thing, just on the internet. A lot of people don't know anything. Be wary of them. Should not. Just trust me. I'm not kidding when I say you will be taken advantage of. I'm not kidding. Huh? All the time. By me. No. The member of the House of Representatives for this district is Matt Rosendale from Glendive. The member of the House of Representatives for the Western District is Ryan Zinke, who actually lives in Santa Barbara, California, but has a hotel room in Whitefish. He grew up in Whitefish. But that's Montana. Yeah. And next, we're going to jump right to Rousseau. The gene will needs the governor. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not the point of the point is now it's time to know. And you're you're now you're all of you are young adults. Some are adults. And <laughs> if you don't know, somebody will make decisions for you that you won't like. Oh sure, you'll complain and whine. Because we're human. All right. No, all we know is Rousseau. Let's get Rousseau down. And what did Rousseau do? Oh, what's God and what can? So Rousseau asked a very basic question. Just listen. If you have progress in arts, if you have the sciences, does that lead to more, greater morality, virtue? The more science and art. And he said, no. So if for some reason, here's Rousseau with geese. But anyways, no. So this is what we have to get. As civilization's progress, he said, morality declines. We become greedy. We become avarice. We allow other people to think for us. We allow our rights to drip away and drip away and then expect others to care about us. Which is you'll find out they don't. That's one thing you guys are going through a remarkable thing called a school, a public education. As flawed as, as it might be out there, we kind of like, care about you. This whole system is created to care about you. And you're going to find out something when, when you leave. It ain't like that. There's other things that care for it, but this is all credit because we want to try. Might be mistakes made. Yeah, I know. But so science and arts corrupts people. They get out of the natural state. Science corrupts. Art corrupts. And so that is this great slogan. You don't need to write this one down, but you, some of you probably heard this before. I really like this one. Rousseau, I can't ever decide. I think for the most part, I, 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 I'm very wary of him. But I do like man is born free and the other wears in chains. I think that's a great quote. Because why have we allowed this to happen? And he said it's science in progress. This is going to be beginning of an idea to kind of go back to nature. It would be called the Romantic Era. But then, oh, that's where the term 
the noble savage. That's true virtue, the noble savage. And this became the glorification, taking advantage of that kind of glorification of the Americans, the, the, the real Americans, those who were here when the Europeans arrived, how free they were. And so his rights, liberty, equality, and fraternity for all. And what do you think is going to be in the, the French motto for rights and their declaration of rights of man? Liberty, equality, fraternity. Very much influenced the French. So last couple things about this. Then. In the social contract, the right government will make people free. If we have the right government, what's going to decide the right government? Well, we must sacrifice some of our, he called it moral interest, but what we want for ourselves. We must sacrifice some of that to the general will. He called moral freedom would be the rights for all, civil liberties. So we got to sacrifice some, and that's the key word, the general will. With the idea of being as a group of people, we can come up with the best system. Everybody come up with that. Now, uh, I'll get to where this is going to be problematic. So we have a social contract with each other, not rulers like Locke with each other. Uh, we're going to jump right to this then. So his thinking, he would influence the French Revolution greatly. In fact, there's a whole out part of the French Revolution would be called the Rousseauian period. We are governing for the general will. And if you disagree, you're going against the general will, meaning off with their head. The guillotine is coming in a couple days. And also by attacking private property. Socialism and communists, especially Karl Marx, would look to Rousseau. And when the Soviet Union would be created, part of their, their logic for creating what turned out to be a monstrous totalitarian state, all for the betterment of people, is we're governing for the general will. And totalitarians everywhere. Adolf Hitler said he's, he's governing for the people, the mass. He represents the mass will. You're too dumb to know what you want. I represent you because I know what you want. So what came out of this? By the way, of course, that's not what I think. And that would be a funny one if someone's walking down the hall and heard me say that. And you're all like, eh, sure, whatever. <laughs> Sounds good. Whatever. Go for it. So last thing. This would begin the ending of the old hierarchies. This concept of individual rights is going to be uh, now what this meant. Um, we're not clear and we're still not clear to this day, but this concept. Also, that social contract governments are created to protect rights. And therefore overthrow it. That's why I have this picture. Anybody know what this picture is? Uh, close to it is more the presenting of it. Here are the five authors of the Declaration of Independence in Jefferson presenting it to the president of the Continental Congress, John Hancock. This would lead to the idea that we need a government of rule, a constitution. Brand new thing. We can progress, progress, whatever that means. Also, a new economic system that see its roots in the Enlightenment called capitalism. And the good and bad elements will come out of that. And then, of course, lots of war, lots of revolution. Thank you, Enlightenment. All right. So we have two choices here. I didn't quite get to the Enlightenment monarchs. This always takes longer than I want. So we have a choice. I could do that really quick to be in class tomorrow and review them all. I'll do the test on Friday. No. All right, take a review though. So, so. Let's do this tomorrow. I want to get done tomorrow too. Well, yeah, we'll do the test on Saturday. I'll be here at 4 a.m. If I'm not here, we're at 4 a.m. If I'm not here, what should you do? 
No, wait for me. Just wait for me. I'll be here. I promise. Come on, my people. Let's call the police. Let's call the police. Okay, let's look at the review list then. And then on Friday, I will tell you a, a one. I'll tell you a couple stories about Catherine the Great. Did you want to hear the Potemkin Village one again? <laughs> and I also tell the story a couple of those, uh, Frederick the Great because the video covered the Seven Years' War, so I'm not too worried about that. Everyone have the review list out. Would you like to know the essay question? Uh, how many people that really want to know? Want it and then not get it? <laughs> I, I will give you a hand. Are you ready? Here we go. I just did I put the best up? Yeah. So, brother, list in front of me. Okay, one of your choices will be Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. One would be the Spanish Armada. One would be the Peace of Westphalia. Hey. Second column. Bottom of the second column, Royalists versus Roundheads. So that's the English Civil War. Top of the third column, another choice will be Cromwell. Another choice right below will be absolutism. Cody already knows it, so he's ready for the deaths now. No, not at all. You don't have a review list? I have chapter 17. I don't know the review list. There should be one right on top. Look for in enlightenment. Uh ba, 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 ba. Louis the 14th. I couldn't decide between Kepler, Galileo, or Principa. We draw out Kepler or, or Principa, which is new. Okay, I'll do Kepler. I'm out of that. I'm cool. We're gonna do four of them though. And then I gave you I gave you lock. Voltaire or Rousseau, one of those three. And lastly, slavery. Slavery, you know, what we saw in the video about the sugar. Slavery. Which slavery do you want for sure? Just one. I'll, I'll give you all three, you pick one. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. So you have lots of choices. Lots of choices. Now, the Seven Years' War, it mentioned in the video, but the treaty that would end the Seven Years' War, and this is going to become the norm. I told you about where all treaties, where they start uh, negotiating all treaties. Not, not Versailles, Paris. Because Versailles is outside of Paris. The treaty is outside of Paris. Figure it out. Um, Frederick the Great, Frederick the Great was the great military on the last column, the great military leader of Prussia, an enlightened despot, kind of enlightened. He was really good at the flute. That important thing we need to know. No. <laughs> I won't ask about the Austrian secession. Oh. You see near the top, salons, that's a place where uh, enlightened philosophers would meet. They were called the salons. Think about like tea houses. That's near the top of that, uh, what column is that? The sixth column. There's lots of columns. Hmm? Yeah, coffee in France, coffee was like a ton of sugar. Yeah, a ton of sugar. Some nice chocolate. Yeah. 
All right. Any let's look at the list and any questions you might have. I will answer anything. Naturalized, philosophs, hops, baking, inductive, discards, deductive. I might ask like one question about Elizabeth, you know, maybe Lepanto. Y'all you know, mentioned the war, three Henrys, Edict of Nance. For the Thirty Years' War, I have I have um, Bohemian phase and French phase. The French phase was the international phase. The Bohemian phase, where it started, is the real religious war: Protestants versus Catholics. Huh? I don't know. Five years later. Well, I do have Wal Wallenstein, the great Holy Roman Emperor, and Adolphus was the great Swedish winner. So I do have that. Any any questions? Let's look at the list. I'll be glad to answer them. Yes. Uh, peace with Westphalia. To the Peace of Westphalia, that's the treaty that ended the Thirty Years' War. Everyone got that. I just told you the Peace of Westphalia. That, that's going to be one of your choices for the short IDs. Ended the Thirty Years' War. And basically, that treaty ended the war and would allow for the religious difference, Catholic and Lutheran, but greatly weakened, beginning the end of the Holy Roman Empire. The decline is going to happen relatively quickly for the peace of Westphalia. And the Dutch would also win their independence and the French gain power. There another one. Yes. Huguenots, those are French Calvinists. They're the ones who were persecuted within France, like the massacre of the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. They would have some rights under the edict of, of Nance, but then their rights would be taken away by Louis XIV. Yes. Copernicus, he was the philosopher, and through observation, was one who said that the um, various planets orbit the sun. And it was a big deal. Once they accepted that, they'd come up with a calendar. Level. And then Capu would do the elliptical orbits, Newton did gravity. Yeah. The War of Three Henrys, that was the Protestant versus Catholic Civil War in France that Henry IV was winning. Henry IV said, All right, I'll become king, I'll, I'll convert to Catholicism, anything to become king and end the wars. There another one. What? Hobbes, Hobbes. Hobbes wrote the Leviathan, and the Leviathan, that's basically what that people were brutish and horrible. And he's a strong leader, king on Leviathan is what he called it. And many people thought Cromwell could be that leader. So Hobbes the idea that we're all just horrible, and only a strong person will control us from cutting each other's throats. Voltaire had an element of that. That's why he believed in the enlightened destiny. Yeah. Uh, War of the Austrian Secession, I'm going to ask now. That was probably Freddie the great, greatest victory, but I'm not going to take that one. Thanks. This is one of the things we have a significant number of wars. I'll tell you a few stories on Friday, then we start the French Revolution. Yeah. So Peter the Great, the absolute monarch of Russia, he's the one who would begin to modernize and defeat the Swedes. That that should be a short ID. Where they had like the beard tats. Yeah, did the beard tats. Peter the Great. I'll give you the I wouldn't include Peter the Great as a choice for short IDs. I just decide arbitrary decision. Sound good? Just a choice. He's the one who would make the capital at St. Petersburg. All right. Yes. Glorious revolution. That is where the Catholic dean, King James, was kicked out. And William and Mary became monarch, and that would lead to the English Bill of Rights. The English Bill of Rights. And Block would justify it with the social contract. Yeah. That's part of it. No Catholic monarch. And, and of course, this is going to have great influence, especially in the United States. I mean, we're, it's, when the United States revolted, it was our rights as Englishmen, and that went back to the English or the. Uh, you ready for the test now? I'm reviewing all these things in covering. I'm not the one who has to take it. 
Yes. Rishmu, that was the advisor to Henry or to Louis the Thirteenth. Rishmu, is that the third column? He was one who believed in politics, do whatever it takes to win. He's the one who got the French involved in the Thirty Years' War. Rishmu. Okay, a little better. Yeah. He also sold the Nobel Bible, right? Huh? Rishmu, he's, he's a cardinal. He sold the Nobel. Yeah, he sold everything to pay for the war. The problem is, therefore, they didn't have taxes. We'll get to that in the French Revolution. Huh? The Dutch wars, always, those were the mercantile wars for Louis XIV. They wanted to expand the empire. They would fight three, arguably four wars with the Dutch. Any others? And I'll get yours next. Well, that's a civil war. And the royalists were those who supported the absolute monarchy of Charles I. And they wanted, and so they wanted absolute control, and they would fight against the roundheads, which wanted parliamentary control over taxation, and were the Puritans. They were the Puritans within England. Remember, they got the roundheads because of fear of going native when they all went to Boston, they might join the local tribes. But follow me. He was the Greek philosopher who Aristotle and everyone followed that said the earth was the center of the universe. And so the Bible had that. That's why I was so controversial with Copernicus. Yeah. That's the English Civil War. The Royalists versus Roundhead, to be clear about it, that's the English Civil War. And who won? The Roundheads. The Roundheads. What happened to King Charles I? Yeah, he was one who was executed. He lost his head. Cromwell, they printed a republic. Out of that came a republic. Am I trying to hand up? Sorry about this. Who? Brian. Tycho Brian was the astronomer. He's the one who spent hours looking up at the sky, recording all the path of the, um, the various stars and, and planets across the sky. His work would go to Kepler, where he get elliptical orbits. So Kepler would use Brahe's work. Is there a statue? Yeah. There's a, there's a bunch of them. A bunch of them. <laughs> and then Kep, and the fuel with Kepler beside him with like a compass, you're doing the math. Both of them wanted to prove that the, uh, especially Brody, that the Earth actually was the center of the universe. They were the very distant. They found out otherwise. Any others? Any others? What's that? Did they disprove themselves, but also then prove? Yeah, they proved Copernicus. Yeah. And very disappointed. Kepler, by the way, was pretty sure, even though he would like to find out something. Kepler was brilliant. The calculus. I do like the idea. I've seen a guy do that. Stick a pole in a barrel and, and accurately measure exactly how much liquid it was. So I just seen them just where the water is on that pole. How do you do that? You just have to do that math in your head so quickly. You're being able to do, do math in your head is a great skill. If you have to do math in your head, you're always behind it. That's for every single job you'll ever do for the rest of your life. All the time, huh? If you want to be a carpenter, you got to do math. You got to do it. You got to be to see it and do it. Oh, God, all the things I need. And you have to have this, all this background information you pull in your Make a mistake or something. Or someone else does. All right. Do you have any questions on the test to be tomorrow? Four short IDs, 74 matching, three maps, and a diorama. So everybody bring a shoebox and clay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, let me ask you this right now. Since we are going to do first semester, we did a project. Second semester, we're going to do a project. And so I'm looking at something from the 20th century. A project you have to construct something. Yes. Same deal. Construct something, make an article, you know, do an article, and I'll give you some choices. If that's, does anybody have a, we have two different projects. We'll, yeah, you, but well, yeah, you could do like the Battle of Kurds. I know exactly the way you think. 
Huh? Actually, if you look back there, that's a pinata atomic bomb right back there. Somebody filled it with candy. We were about ready to destroy it. Yeah. No, I gotta say. But we still wanted the candy, so we bore a hole in it. Did them all. You guys are gonna nail the test. Or not. I, I did well. I'm gonna do really well on it. I've been pulling one hand for 15 years and found out yesterday I've never been able to do that again since. I got the big skin. Are you still using it? Like, you know what do you do? Like, the I think it's not like it's not like it's not like and kept some eight dollars. What's your thought about the NBA? Um, I'm not just on the phone, so what? Oh, yeah, you start with our idea. Oh, you start with the story. Not like Marsh and Betty. We're sending the bank. Yeah, I know. I'm kidding. Okay, there's a few of you guys that get past that book and stop begging for the call. The funny part of the advertisements, lots of advertisements for cigarettes. It is 1960. Let's bring that. Of course, that's when I thought I could show you. I could show you advertisements sometime. That'd be a fun unit. Never ever. All these advertisements of doctors telling you if you're pregnant, it's hell. Doctors can tell. Have you had asthma? Smoke. Don't smoke. Asthma should stop you. Nope. <laughs> that, 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 that's exactly what they said. They don't like working out. Don't watch something. Why would you smoke? Camel had your teeth on it. It's made. It's not sure. All these. I don't think much. What an awful atheist in the scenario. It was obviously everybody's house. I think it was still the same. My first three years at school, two of my teachers were in the office. I thought it was the same. It was next to. They knew smoking was bad, by the way. Cigarette company do not have a thing called it. But they still had a bad thing. They still. And I remember every recess or anything, all the teachers would spread down on the teacher's side. There was a lot of teachers smoking when I first started. Where do you have to take? You have to take the test. It's not. And you can it's not. Well, you can this is the greatest looking test I've ever slept on. Huh? All of my letters look exactly the same. All right, we got to take this out. Grab your desk. Yeah. All we, all we need are, you get the desk out there. Grab your desk out. Yeah, just remind me.
The rest of us can take a quiz. Not my idea. Emma wanted a quiz. I I demand a quiz. It's like my Good luck. All right. You need a test. Yeah, you need a piece of paper. All right, everybody. You're tardy. Yeah, actually, the paper. That's so crazy. Oh, no. Not kidding. Just like better half. I mean, it's better half. Hey, quit whining, dude. Sorry. Well, all right i got 20 questions okay number one Oh, oh, my bad. All right, here we go. Somebody showing off, they can rip paper. Here we go. Number one. Number one. Okay, this is the hard one. Number one. In 1931, how tall was I? Six three. In 1931, the Japanese army in Korea on their own. It's just the, the, the army did it. What place did they invade? Take over, put up a public government. In 1931, from Korea. From Korea. From Korea. It was the Japanese army in Korea. What? Korea was Japanese army. Oh. They invaded they they someplace else. Oh, okay, so these people invaded someplace Yes, else. from Korea. So the army was in Korea, and then from Korea, they crossed the border and invaded. Put up a couple government. And now they're in Japan. Japan. Like, land-wise, the bigger the That's an easy one. Look at the map. It's literally right there. Oh, yeah. don't look at the map. It's a terrible, terrible. Hit. I'm not helping at all. Number two. Here's another top one. What group? Or what international organization was created after World War One to stop this kind of thing, but had no power, so it did nothing? What international organization? Did nothing to stop this. It didn't work. It was created after World War One. Let's just put it this way: it didn't last past the next war. Basically, it ended. Do we know? I know there's a few of you know. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. Should know this. This is I know it. If I know it, you should know it. Number three. 
Looking at this map. Or this map. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a map somewhere. If I point that way long, and you go long enough. What country did Japan invade in 1937? Okay. Okay. Uh, Generic founding fathers. The guys were the the declaration. Thirty-seven. Here's another one. Are you ready? What place? It was a colony of a European power that Japan took in forty and forty-one. What colony was that? What colony of a European power? They took in 40 and 41. I'll give you a hint. It's not Wyoming. Yeah. We're going to run out of erasers for that one, right? Good punch. Number five. The United States would embargo what after the Japanese took that colony in 1441? What would the United States embargo mean? They quit trading oh. with Japan. What commodity? Commodity you think you buy and sell a value. Commodity could be grain. Commodity could be gold. A commodity could be frozen concentrated orange juice. All those are commodities. It could be broccoli. I shouldn't say broccoli. Oh, God. Oh, oh damn. No, that gives you a hint, right? Who, who already knows all these things? There's a few that know all of these. This one, all of you should know. Because of number five, what colony of another European country did Japan want, and that would be their justification to attack at Pearl Harbor, the American naval base in the Hawaiian Islands. What colony did they want because of number five? IT. So, it's. It's. That joke never gets old. Way too long. I still say. Number seven. <laughs> How are we doing on this one? Actually, not really bad. It's not worse. Yeah. Okay. Next one, actually. Okay, so the Japanese did attack the American colony of the Philippines. Was that the. Wait, was that none of these? It's none of them. Oh, it's none of them. The, um, the American colonial army and the, and the Filipino soldiers that come kind of Filipino militia, their plan was to retreat to this little peninsula on the big island of Luzon and hold out. Eventually, they would surrender, and the, the Japanese treatment of the POWs would be one of the most brutal examples of the war crime in history. What was that little peninsula? It's going to become one of the most infamous places in American history, Filipino history, Japanese history. What is that little peninsula? Some of you know it. Can you somebody write it down right away? Some of you know about the Philippines was taken in 1940 and 41 by Japan. So, I'll give you a hint. All right, now this is a good question. What was the decisive turning point victory for the United States Navy in June of 1942, where outnumbered, they sunk four Japanese carriers and literally turned the entire tide of war into history? What was the battle? Yes. It's actually the furthest. Westernmost island in the Hawaiian island chain. So it's an island, but what is the battle? One of the most important battles in history. To give you an idea how long the Hawaiian islands are, 
it's a thousand miles from Oahu. That's how this little island is set. Does that help? I got it. So it's not Oahu. No. It's and, it, and it's not Wyoming either. It's not Canyon Ferry. It's not Butte. <laughs> which is kind of an island within Mon Montana. I hate something called Butte. What are we doing on this? Who feels confident in making your entire year grade based upon this? <laughs> I think two people raised their hand. I think only one was serious. So good luck. <laughs> Number nine, are you ready for this? No. I am. Number nine. What was the first island? It was in the Solomon Island chain that American Marines would attack as the first of their island hopping campaign to start to push back the Japanese expansion. They attacked in August of 1942 in the Solomons. And it's going to be a brutal, nightmarish, year long fight on this jungle island. I mean, one of the nightmares. Yes. No, just do the best you can. Okay, now we're going to jump ahead. I'm expecting a phone call from somebody if I did not expect it now. And it's spam. Okay, so. I'm expecting a phone call. My, my dad had to get surgery yesterday. He's okay. Actually, it was pretty, I was pretty nerve wracking yesterday, but it's at least fine. But I was waiting for a phone call, but he said we would call after three, and my phone rang. That's always one of those, um, <laughs> but it's okay. When you don't expect a phone call, yeah, that's the good thing about cell phones. You can see, you know, just automatically look. I, when I was your age, the, the phone would just ring, and you just had to answer. And it could be anybody. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. You can say, I'm not talking to them. Either. Not that I would ever do that, but number 10, are you ready? What was the bloody battle island that the United States would attack in early 1945? An island that's smaller, that's about half, about a third the size of Lewis, not even a third, I'm sorry, about a tenth the size of Lewis and Clark County. That, that um, 21,000 Japanese defenders defended it, and all but 600 had to be killed to take this island. It had a huge volcanic mountain on one side called Mount Suribachi that literally had to be taken whole by hell. In fact, there was still like steam rising up, battle just nightmarish proportions. 7,000 Marines and sailors died taking that island. Anybody know that island? <laughs> Last two, are we ready? Number 11, are we ready? Number 11. What was the last major battle of World War II? The biggest amphibious assault of the war, bigger than D-Day, on a Japanese island. You're gonna write that, yeah? <laughs> yeah, all planned. On this island, 20,000 soldiers and soldiers, sailors, and Marines would die to this island. They would end up killing 60,000 Japanese soldiers and civilians would die. But a third did surrender for the first time in the war. It is the first battle where the large use of kamikaze was taken. Let me know that one. The United States still has 30,000 Marines. And sailors on this island until this day. The major base. Let me give you a hint. I get terrible hints. It's on that map. <laughs> and number 12, are we ready? Last, and I would argue not least at all. What country agreed, there's a wartime conference at a place called Yalta, agreed to attack Japan? three months after Germany surrendered in the largest military operation in history. 
They attacked Japanese held areas that just happened to be the answer to number one. What country attacked? I'll give you a hint. It's not Canada. Once, but Canada did very well in Japan. Even Canada said that's because it is. How do we do? Shall we grade our own? I think we can grade our own. Things. How many feel confident in half of your answers? How many feel confident in over 10? How many feel confident in two? How many feel confident in none? Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, 1930, 1931? Manchuria. What? Manchuria. And the Japanese were created. <laughs> what? The Japanese were created public government called Manchuko. And one of the most amazing thing was, so China had a civil war back in the teens of the 20th century. And the last emperor, as a young boy, was ousted and lived kind of as a playboy in Shanghai and various places. The Japanese put him as emperor of Manchukuo, the last emperor of China. One of those weird quirks. But the Soviets would capture him, and uh, he would go to a re-education camp, and he would die like in the 1980s in Beijing. Number two, what was that international body? League of Nations. League of Nations. What was the successor to the League of Nations? United Nations. NATO is a military alliance. I know, you know, we got, you got a lot of alliances in your head. Number three, 1937, who did Japan invade? Korea was already a colonist. China. I should add, Dr. Yes, just an article maybe eight ago about how much South, uh, Korea, about South Korea and Japan don't, especially Korea, they don't, they don't like each other. Legacy of the of, of colonialization. China enslaved or Japan enslaved millions of Koreans for everything from work to horrific things. I haven't let your mind wander. What place did they invade in 4041? Yeah, that's French Indochina. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> France in a shocking defeat should not have happened. France lost to Germany in just a month and, and a half. Huh? What? What did you say? Number five. I have no idea what you said. And it's probably good. I, I don't want to know. Number five. What did the United States embargo? Oil. Oil. Six. <laughs> what colony did Japan want, but didn't want the U.S. messing with it, that they could knock them out and get it? The Dutch East Indies. All the oil they could ever need. The problem was, and we'll look up here real quick. Here's the Philippines, right there. That's in the way. So that they could knock that out. <laughs> all the, the war in the Pacific, all it's all a colonial war. Seven, the, the peninsula. Anyone know? Anyone? Yeah. Australia. That's a that's a continent of the country. Yeah. 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 The place is called Vatan. I know. And and this will be. When, when the United States, when President Truman, after the fact, announced the first atomic bomb, when the justification for the treaty of the POWs at the time. What battle? Number eight. Midway. The Battle of Midway. Oh, everybody. Here's... The Hawaiian Islands go all the way to here. That's all Hawaiian Islands. <laughs> Midway right there. Well, it would have been funny if all of a sudden the chair <laughs> crashed and you fell. And, wouldn't that be that you fall? <laughs> would have been hilarious. That would have been actually No, I never said that. <laughs> you said that, Paul. What's number nine? Oh, what, what, what was the island? The first island they... They, the the counterattack, so to speak. Anyone know? Good guess, no. 
Brook here. Waddle Canal. Hell on earth. Yes. I, I can't even begin to describe how bad. Oh, uh, Tam. What island had Mount Suribachi, volcanic? That's Iwo Jima, yeah. Iwo Jima, right? They did it for a base for fighter planes. What island do we still have troops on? Okinawa. Okinawa? Well, who entered the war? The Soviet Union. This attack right here was the largest military offensive in history. And the, and the Japanese were, to say the least, spooked. Well, not huh? Who got 10 or better? We got one 10. Who got, you got 10? That's one. Well, you didn't answer Guadalcanal or Baton. Oh, I did. But you know, but you kept it secret when I asked. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> sure, but I was afraid to be wrong. All right, so good job on that. These are all things we're going to know. I'm not going to go. Yeah. Wait, I changed my mind. They're all going to go in the scrapbook. Bring them here. We're making a scrapbook. Oh, thanks. thanks. All right, everybody. So. First thing is first, everybody take out the map I gave you. Yeah, you're really funny. All right. So, did you notice we just I just named a few of those places? Did anybody remember where Okinawa was? Somewhere. Somewhere. Good. Yeah. Somebody was singing. Fucking <laughs> off, right there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you the next about 15 minutes. Let's let's get the, as much of the map done as we can get. Focus on the country, cities, and water first, and then we'll do the battles. I'm scared of this map a little bit, so they have a tendency to fall. It's not quite as good. That map is excellent. The only problem with this map is it has a lot of its place names the same they had in 1945. So like it calls, and I'm not even sure why they call Beijing. Out of your page. Very good, very good. Yeah, for some reason, they have Beijing as uh, Beijing as Peking. That's it. But that's Beijing. I learned it as Peking. The British bastardization of the spellings. Like in Guangzhou, I learned it's from Guang. You need the map. Oh, yes, guys. You may have the map. You can it. Let's see it. Here we go. You do finish the map. All right, well, that one's done. Let's 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 do it. All right. Ninety percent of your grade. Oh, never mind. And not in this class. Other classes. Very exciting. I just gave five the, extra credit okay. points to you all, to all, everybody in that. I gave it yesterday. It's going to be here since it's Yes, sir. 
Yeah, it's like it's so big. It's like it's so big. 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 It's so big.
If you need anything, I'll be glad to point out places. Not What are you doing? <laughs> Making it change colors, because apparently it changes colors. Yeah. Oh. Where's my mouse? Yeah. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. No, so it's, it's you. I need my math back. You're on it. You need my math back. 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 You need so basically the same how much you can find out. Yeah, I think that's Oh my god. It's a lot lot of Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Incredibly dark. And slightly morbid. Let's go, let's go. No more morbid and dark stuff. We're talking more here. <laughs> you usually yeah. call it Joe. Oh, it's over there. Wow. It's my nature. He had it. Can we put it on my desk? The British colony of the Every place I'm really excited. Oh, that's so funny. I can do it. It's like a good one. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yes. I love it. You should definitely take it. Ian, I think you're lying to me. So, try to see. I'm going to take it. You're going to take it. I think you just look at all the same. See it from where you are? It's in plain view. It's like my mouth. What do you think of your mouth? It's good. And now I'm getting nervous because I should see it. What? I'm missing something. She hit my map something. And apparently it's in plain sight. Yeah. You see it. See what? This is what's stopping me. Wait, I didn't. I don't. I didn't do it. This is not correct. Now we got to give him a We'll do a few things about the roots of the war. I'm trying to decide how much I want to tell you, how much we do history. Some of it we're gonna we're gonna watch a great video. Anything we can't find. It'll be a massive naval battle there. Called the Battle of Jobsky. The Americans got the clock. The Americans got the clock. The Americans got the clock. 
Pretty sure it's not right? So it's still two countries. There's actually three countries in the little tiny kingdom of Bhutan. Um, don't know where it's Go, we should be done. No. Do you see uh, this? I don't know. Somebody got it. Where's Formosa? Today it's Taiwan. Uh, okay. Where's Taiwan? It was a Japanese. Formosa was a Japanese college. It's right above the Any questions? I'll be glad to point randomly at things. Where can I find a million dollars? Where can you find a million dollars? I just want my cop, then I'll let you know. Well, if you, tell me, where it, if you tell me where it is, I'll give you a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm wondering. laughs> that is, that is, that is, that is, yeah, I mean, you should ask the King or Nang King, same thing. That actually was the capital of China back in the I think I'm done. Yes, it's very clear. 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 Uh, the Japanese had a massive naval base and they basically just left with them on the line. No, but you get unlimited. Yes. But talking about, you want to stand this? Yeah, I'll take the Yeah, but I thought you just said the other one. Oh, I didn't make sure. We're going to talk about you getting sick. Yeah, okay. There's the money. That is extremely good. Okay. I'm not done yet. I need to take this. By the way, can anyone guess where the Burma Road is? The Burma Road? The one road that's. No, wait, wait. Does anybody know why this is such a big deal? No, seriously. Why would this be a big deal? Why? The Japanese control all this. How do you get supplies to China? Japanese control all these areas. That would be one of the few ways to get supplies to China. And it is really high, rugged mountains. Some the peaks up here, right here, as high as 18,000 feet. That's taller than me. No way. Is that how tall is the number in England? Yeah, about 18,000 feet. Okay. Any other ones we can't find? I'll be glad to point out battlefields. I'll point out anything. Okay. Sometimes correctly. It's, you know, life is full of choices. It's I know, I said, I had to be in real time. What are you talking about? It's not that he's trying to It feels like the prize of the I broke my, I just, I don't understand. Um, so, 
Canton was the way that the British voted. So it was all the maps you saw in the United States. It's Canton today. It looked like Wan Chao. It could be anywhere near Hong Kong. Hey, that the Southern really? Miles, this is. The Pacific is big, everybody. Exactly. Okay, where is this? Um, hardly answered. Even said it. I said it's, it could be anywhere near Hong Kong. Then uh, everything in the United States would have called the Canton. When I was your age, everyone, it was called Canton in the U.S. And is British North Carolina just, just this little tiny yeah. piece or the whole the whole North Carolina? Oh, oh like I'm very smart in the things. So are you? <laughs> Flat map is so weird. Oh, yeah. Two of the Island. Miserable cold places. Midway's here. Wake. Brooke. In the Pacific. Yeah. Here, I'll point. I'll point the truck right now. So on the list. Truck right now. Is it like Darwin? It's the second most important Japanese base in the South Pacific. So the U.S. would just bypass it and let it kind of wither on the bottom. So it, it did not surrender to the war in it. It's really um, I never think they're gonna take them on they're really like, we don't need to. We just they're on an island. What are they gonna do? Don't you still really really just have the wave? So they call it leapfrogging or an island hop. This isn't the Dutch. No, that's the solids. These are the Dutch. Look, all what is Indonesia now is the Dutch. So okay. The Solomons are right here. And that's where the first unbelievable fighting. In fact, a certain ship named after a certain city that we might live in was was sunk in those islands. The USS Towns. No, the USS Allen. I just pointed out. Well, there's Trump. Thank you. Yes, I did. Oh, I found Trump. Where's the thing? Oh, where's the thing? 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 So Sam is like you have to say why you realize today. No, I just want to do all the battle. Trying to remember. What is the last verse of the little ones? It's in the other ones. Where was the little ones? That was me saying. Right off the, they call that iron bottom sound. 
Oh, that's really close to where John Kennedy's uh, PT office is round by Japanese explorer. Java C. Java C. There's Java. There's Java C. Just taking Java C. Sumatra. The Maldive Islands. Maldive Islands. Ceylon. The Andaman Islands. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to enter where you can all know? Ed Mike's A. I know you said that one. John Madden. I'm Portland, Oregon. Antelope. Antelope. Where's Malaya? It was Malaya. It was a British colony. Now it's called Malaysia. Ah. 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 What? Watch along. Yeah, that was your call. <laughs> Okay, let me ask you a quick question. Quick question. What's in a toll? <laughs> yeah, basically a volcano. All we have are little tiny islands that kind of form a little ring. Usually has coral reefs surrounding it. They don't, they're basically just this small island that could be no more than 10 or 15 feet high at sea level. And no usually, usually no water, maybe a few plants on it. But they would start to be taken in important places for bases, important places for like seaplanes. So like we mentioned Kwajalong, these are all atolls. There's only a couple that have water on them, so everyone has to be brought here. One of the most important toll in important U.S. places was this place called Wake. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense. Hawaii's here, Wake. So it's bouncing across the Pacific. I should add, about halfway between Hawaii and Wake was this island called Midway. Get it? Oh. And they have big albatrosses, they call them Goonie Birds. Anything else? Big albatross. <laughs> yeah. You know what an albatross is? They know you. <laughs> albatross are a massive seabird. Wingspan of 400 feet. Actually, the wingspans are about 10, 12 feet. They're huge. <laughs> there are albatross, this is true. There are albatrosses that won't land on dry ground or over a year and a half. They just kind of get the thermals and just float. They're, they're amazing birds. No, the problem is in any place where there's big air bases, you have to be in Albatrosses, plane, but then. Morgan, Okay. I'm going to the U.S. Marines took the southern part of the country. Yeah, non-K, non-K. I think I might have put down to my memory non k but I should have put that down. They do every day. Because in the United States, you'll get a call to that. I should have put that down. You know what I'm trying to be like, we would send an amount from the United States to me. This will be due on Saturday morning, 4 a.m. Be here. I will be here. Christian has already told me he's going to boil up a big pot of scones for us all. And then yeah, boil. Boil. It's it's boiling. Now, if, if we're not here, just wait for us. We might have gone to the store and get uh, get flour or, or artichokes or whatever you go. We'll get it going. Yeah. Artichoke scones? Guess when it is due? Fridays. Friday. Friday. Yeah. One would imagine. That's my point of Kit Kat's so I'll think about it. I'm, I'm open to bribery for this one. Yeah, 